This is a safe haven for many as the dangerous triple digit heat sets in. This place provides food and water for people having to endure our sweltering summers outside. But for those of us fortunate enough to have a home with air conditioning, did you ever think what would happen if the power failed? Arizona is ground zero for an extreme heat disaster. We haven't had it yet, but it's coming. Well, the city of Tempe is preparing for that possibility now. ABC 15's Zach Crenshaw shows us how. This building used to be a Middle Eastern cafe, but now the city of Tempe owns it, and they're transforming it to not only meet community needs and provide resources, but hopefully save lives during our extreme heat. When it's summer in the valley, one word comes to mind. It's pretty brutal, honestly. You don't get used to it and everything like man, It's brutal out here. Our region is turning into Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So the summer of 2020 was what we're looking towards in the future. 53 days over 110 degrees. Braden Kay is the sustainability and resilience director for the city of Tempe. Every neighborhood in the country needs a community based solution like this that can solve everyday problems like housing and workforce development while being ready for that disaster when it strikes. Next year, this gutted building will offer support. This is where our resilience hub is going to be. So we were going to have this outfitted to have a cooling center where people can come on those extreme heat days. I think that people in the valley should be very concerned about a heat catastrophe. Dr. Melissa Guadaro is a professor with ASU. And like many experts nationwide, she worries that the country's power systems could buckle. What if there is a heat wave, which is prolonged days of extreme heat, and then we have a power outage? Do people have a plan in place? There is no question that this type of disaster and extreme heat is going to come to our city and our region and our state in the future. The question is, are we strong enough to invest in that future now to reduce the amount of casualties? Preparing for something like this is absolutely necessary. As construction continues, Braden looks forward to the day these resilience centers are commonplace. I do think this is going to save lives. Zach Crenshaw, ABC 15, Arizona.